Journey Church and anyone who's visiting for the first time, we'd want to welcome you to our online church service. We're so excited to get right into worship with you, but before we do that, I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. First thing is we'd love for you to drop a line in the chat and tell us where you're watching from and maybe who you're watching with. The second thing is that if God highlights anything in your heart, any impressions as you hear the word of God or even worship, then we would love to hear from you. Would you share that in the chat as well? And we also have this live prayer button that's available for you. So if you need prayer at any time, it opens up a private chat room with one of our hosts who are ready to pray with you and to walk with you. And lastly, church, I want to encourage you that at the end of this service, if you feel that you want some next step and some resources, we would love to do that and get that information to you. So go ahead and ask us. I'm so excited to get right into worship. Let's jump right into it. But the blood of Jesus 
Yeah. 
That was an amazing time of worship that we had. We're so excited that we get to worship God through different ways. And this includes our giving. We're so thankful that you are partnering with us here at Journey Church in order for us to ensure that we can continue to run service even through this pandemic that's still happening. But we wanna thank you. Thank you for those that have been faithful in their giving and we are so thankful for you. We also wanna encourage those that if you've never made a decision to give, this is the time that we would love for you to partner with us as we continue to even think about how we steward our money and how we want to relate to God as his children, that giving is just a portion of that. So we want to partner with you and encourage you. The easiest way that you can text, just pull out your phone and text the number that comes up on the screen and text the word give and it pops up and it gives you a form. We have other methods of payment as well that's available to you, but we just want to say thank you so much that you're partnering with us, that you are making this possible. Journey Church small group is still happening. We have an opportunity to still gather and to still seek the Lord together. And this Journey Church is your opportunity to be part of what God is doing. We need to connect relationally in order for us to grow spiritually. If you want to do that, small groups is the best way to do that. You don't really need to do too much. Small groups has changed in the way how we do it. All you really need is your laptop and your phone, either or, or even grab your Bible and join a group today. We need to be in community with one another to grow in this time where there's difficulties happening. If you've been thinking about doing small groups or you've been shying away, we've had so many different changes over the last six months, but church, I wanna encourage you that you get to be part of small groups. The new semester launches October 4th, and I'm so excited about the new things that are taking place here in our church. So go ahead and head over to myjourney.church forward slash small groups and join one today. You can take a look virtually at all the different options that we have available. But October 4th is when our small groups are kicking off. I'm so excited, so save the date and take a look at what options we have available. We are really excited about the word that's gonna take place this morning. Pastor Dave is gonna speak on Word to the Wise as a series that we're continuing to talk about wisdom. So let's open up our Bibles and take a listen to what Pastor Dave has to say. Hi everybody, welcome to week three in our series, A Word to the Wise. And so today as we look at scripture, specifically in Proverbs, we've been studying Proverbs for the last number of weeks. Today we're gonna to look at something 
that uh, I believe is going to be transformational as we, as we look at God's word today. And so as we're looking at the wisdom sayings, we've been looking at this for the last number of weeks, our theme verse for today is taken from Pro- Proverbs 4, verse 7. And it says this, Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it'll cost all you have, get understanding. No, wisdom is very different from knowledge. I need you to understand that today. Knowledge is knowing some things, but wisdom is knowing how to live it out. So the book of Proverbs is filled with all sorts of wisdom. If you were to to do a study of all the themes, there's so much on wisdom. There's so many different word studies you can do throughout all of the scripture, but specifically even in in Proverbs. And today we're going to look at one of those themes, a word, generosity. And uh, fun fact for you today, if you were to do a word study of specific words, Um, The Bible seems to give a lot of attention to very specific words, and here's a few of you, uh, a few of these words today, if you were to study God's word, doing a very specific word study. The word believe. Can you believe it? That the word believe actually comes up 272 times in scripture. The word pray, or prayer, comes up about 371 times in scripture. The word love which you would think there would be a lot talked about in regards to love, comes up 714 times in Scripture. And the word give or generosity, believe it or not, comes up 2,161 times in Scripture. That's because your God is a generous God. God so loved the world that he what? He He gave. He gave. That's what God is all about. And all the people who follow him to this day are generous people as well. I don't even think I have to really force or coerce you. If you love Jesus, if you have a relationship with God, you get this, that you are a giving person, not just out of your financial resources. That's not what we're talking about today. But you give of your life, you give of your resources, you give of your time to people. And so when, once you understand the love of God, and if you don't yet know him in a personal way, I'm going to challenge you to think about this and listen to these words today. I'm going to give you a chance and an opportunity to receive the love of God in your life today before this day is through. But when you understand that outlandish love of God, you are compelled to give. It's amazing. Let me just start out today by by saying this, that you are an amazingly generous church. Incredibly generous in so many ways, and I am so thankful to be your pastor. I've seen this in action in, in many different ways. What I'm trying to do today is I don't have an ulterior agenda, an ulterior motive here today, but I just want us to be reminded of the principles that are given in scripture here and hopefully prod you to become even more generous as God gives you that ability. And so let me share with you a scripture today um, from the message version. I love how it's stated here in Proverbs 11, 24 in the message. It says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. I don't know about you, but I want to be on the generous side of things rather than the stingy side of things. Now, most of these scriptures that are uh, written in in the Bible uh, about generosity really focus not about the recipients of the generosity, but it really is all about the generosity of the person. The generous person. That's what they're talking about here. They're talking about what generosity will do for you, not what it does for them. Kind of interesting. There are other scriptures that that talk about that, but, but most of them are talking about what generosity will do for you. Now, the person who figures out how to live generously 
giving of your life in such a way that all you do is, is really to think about others, that you are about lifting people up, encouraging people. You generally care about the, the, the well-being of others. And it's not about money. That's a generous person. You can be a generous person in a whole lot of ways where you live your life in such a way that makes a difference in someone else's life. That makes them better and it makes you better as well. That's the wisdom. That's the wisdom we're looking at today as we look at the scripture. In fact, let me give you a couple of quotes because I just think they're interesting. Winston Churchill said this. He said, We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Isn't that good? Actually, Mother Teresa said this, and she said, a life not lived for others is not a life. As a church, you know, we have some values that we hold on to, six values that we talk about, that we believe in, that are important for us as a community of believers and you know, we, we, we believe in outsiders being embraced, next generation focused, inclusive community, naturally supernatural. One of the, the values that I, we hold on to and really believe in is something we call our, our generous servanthood. Now, generous servanthood simply means that serving is our privilege. It's something we get to do. That generosity is our passion. And we believe that around here. These values aren't just things that we have to to force upon you or force upon one another, they come out of a genuine love of Christ in our lives. A heart that God has given us. He's placed this in us. And this is the wisdom that we get to walk with today. So I'm excited to to really look at the scripture today and, and look at the wisdom of Proverbs. And I have four principles I want to share with you really quickly from the book of Proverbs that says, it talks about generosity. The first one is this. The generous, the, the generous are vitalized. Wow, what does that mean? The generous are vitalized. They're contented people. They're, they're happy people. Generous people have fun being generous. Have you ever noticed that? They just love being generous. It's, it's, it's a blast to watch. Now, think about this is as um, maybe you're, you're going down the street, you're driving your car, you're riding your bike, you're walking down the street, and you see these kids with the little lemonade stand. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen this. Maybe you were that kid at one point. You know, five cents, a cup of lemonade, and you see them and you're like, man, this looks like a mess. These kids, I don't know if they stirred it with their dirty little fingers and they poured it in the, in the cup and there's like fingerprints all over the cup. And here you go, sir, five cents. And you, you, you just, you know what? You just like, oh, here's, here's five dollars. Thanks. And you walk away and you pour that thing out. But man, wasn't that such a blessing? Wasn't it amazing to be able to to bless them and be generous and say, hey, it's all good. It's all good. I love Jesus. He's going to keep me safe, right? You know, it's really interesting when we look at science. Actually, it talks about this, and there are studies that have been proven that, that giving actually gives you a feeling of pleasure. Chemicals are released into your brain, into your body, that gives you the sensation of pleasure. I mean, that's God. That's, that's, that's God who did that in your life. That's not just a feeling you get. He wasn't forcing you to be generous because, you know, this is the way it has to be. If you're going to be one of my followers, you must do these things. No, he made that a part of how he built you. That's a part of of your makeup. It's amazing to think about that. The scripture says this in Proverbs eleven twenty five, that the generous will prosper. Actually, that word prosper means to be pushed forward. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Isn't that good? Proverbs 21, verse 26 says this, some people are always greedy for more, but the godly love to give. Man, let me just encourage you as I've been encouraged by this. You know, as we're all watching the news each and every day, living through this pandemic, there's a lot of negative that's going on, right? But let me just share with you that that as a church, 
we're probably in the best place that we have ever been financially in the history of our church. It's an incredible thing. In, in, in such a challenging time in our world, in such a unique situation that we're facing globally, the uncertainty of the economy, of, of the political unrest and situations all over the world, we're faced with such an unstable climate at times. It would seem as though this may be a very difficult season for us as a church, financially. But I just want to thank God today. I want to thank God today that God's ways are not our ways. Amen? And, uh, it, you know, it doesn't make sense what's happening. Other than this, that's just the faithfulness of God and his generous people. So thank you. It's an incredible story of what God's doing. Let me give you the second principle. The generous are caring people. Yeah, that's right. Why don't you just, you know, like elbow the person beside you and say, yeah, we're generous people. They care about injustice. They are in tune with the needs of others. They're compassionate. The greatest injustice that, you know, that we all experience is that people are in this world do not know the loving, saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is a great injustice. There are still people in this world that have never been exposed to the gospel message. We're doing our part. We're doing our best as a church to make sure we reach as many people with the gospel message in the, and find new ways to do this in the days to come. Proverbs 29, 7 says this, that the righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. You're, you're doing this. You're caring about people as you give through missions. Your missions dollars are going to serve and reach people that maybe you, you didn't even know as you give in your tithes, in your offerings here at Journey Church, we are able to do incredibly, exceedingly more than we could ever ask for or imagine as the Word of God teaches us. We're serving the poor. We're serving needy all across the world in places like the Congo, where through a hospital mission, Jesse Mitchell is making inroads and making a difference, and our support to him in turn is supporting these people bringing education to local villagers through some really dire circumstances. You have, I don't know if you knew this, but you have a Christian presence on all of the university campuses here in Calgary. Because of the work, through Kelly Johnson, Phil Odd, and uh, University Campus Ministries, we're able to support them to make sure that people have the opportunity to know Jesus and follow him and walk with him. They have opportunities to talk with people who are far from God and have conversations with them. Your support and caring goes to ensure that this continues to go on. We have an opportunity to take care of supporting women who are abused and being exploited in our city through the wonderful work at Next Step Ministries and Phil and Jackie Reimer and Becky Bradbury and others who are volunteering in that ministry right here in our own congregation at Journey Church. So thank you. Thank you for being a caring people. Thank you for reaching out and, and ministering to people, making a change through them. And most uh, recently through the um, ministry of extended family, some people in our congregation, Israel and Noreen, saw a need during this COVID crisis and, and making sure that people had food delivered to them if they couldn't get out of their homes, uh, mostly the elderly or sick. And we were able to support that and through other sponsorships to make sure that people were cared for. So good. What an incredible opportunity we have to care for people. And so we're working on some new things, some new opportunities to, to to reach people, to care for people. So please, stay tuned. We're still working behind the scenes on the details of this, and we would ask that you would participate with us, continue to, to work with us as we reach more people. Why are we doing this? Why are we talking about this? Well, Proverbs 21, verse 13. If a man shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, he too 
will cry out and not be answered. Some good principles and scriptures to live by today. Next principle is this, that the generous are blessed. Isn't that good? I I, want to teach this in a very biblical but balanced way. I want you to hear this today in a balanced way. The Bible says that if you give, God is going to bless you, right? You've heard that before. But I've also heard it being preached that, you know, give and it will be given to you and, and you will be blessed, you know, multiple fold, multiple times over. And, and you, you know, you just careful of this. We never want to be uh, giving and check our motivation. I want us to check our motivation with this. We never want to give to get. I'm still amazed at hearing people who would teach that if you give to this ministry, you will receive a double portion. Listen, that it may be true, but that can never be our motivation. We give because our, of our love for God and of our love for people. And the fact that God would even bless us the fact that he would even bless us back, in my opinion, he doesn't have to do another th- single thing. We have been blessed to be a blessing. God has given us his life through Jesus Christ, who gave us the ultimate sacrifice of, of knowing who he is and walking in step with him in purpose of our Savior, our Creator. He saved us from a life of, of destruction that we were doing to ourselves. And God has given us hope in him. He never owes us, he never needs to send us another thing or give us another thing. Proverbs 22 verse 9 says this, Blessed are those who are generous because they feed the poor. Proverbs 28, 27, Whoever gives to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to poverty will be cursed just want to show you some verses in Proverbs alone that really just, they show us how to embrace a life of generosity. Church, you're, you're doing this. I want to encourage you. The generous are satisfied. The, the generous are rewarded is our next principle. Let me just say some, some things here. Some days I feel like I'm living in a dream. Absolutely, yes. Like, like, you know, seriously, like, if you think about this, when I think about what God has blessed us with, this, this incredible church, uh, the story of, of how God brought two churches together in this merger to become Journey Church with an incredible group of people like yourselves that love us back, it's incredible. Uh, I have the opportunity to have an incredible family, my wife. Uh, I've got two dogs and a, 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 beta, a beta fighting fish. That, that's pretty amazing right there. Well, listen. Seriously, with, with all this blessing that I've been given, I'm always asking the Lord, God, help me steward this well. You've given me so much. There's so, much, so many blessings in this world. But how do I not just go, see, my life is awesome. You just need to trust Jesus more, and, and this is what you'll get. It's not like that at all. I'm so thankful for what God's blessed me with, but I recognize that he has um, given me so much and I want to make sure that I'm stewarding what he gives me to make a greater impact in this world. That the resources that he's blessed me with, that the favor that you and I have, that he's placed in our hands, I want to stand before the Lord one day and be satisfied. That the reward that is given to me, not because I deserve it, but I'm looking for God to say to me, well done, good and faithful servant. I can't wait to hear those words. I'm not doing these things to to really secure my position in, in heaven or in the kingdom. But the truth is, for all believers, there will be a reward. Proverbs 19, verse 17, If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord, and he will 
repay you. Isn't that awesome? Like, I just don't deserve that. We don't deserve it. But Jesus, he believes in his, in, in us so much that he places this in the last book of, of scripture, in the book of Revelation, in regards to our satisfaction or our reward. Revelation 22 verse 12 says, look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I think, I think that we should live with this type of life that far outlives our lives. A life that leaves a legacy. A legacy life. I think that's what God wants to, how to live. And so, you know, the truth is that what we usually, what we do for our, ourselves usually dies with us. What we do for others lives beyond us. That's a legacy life. That's a legacy life that I want to leave, that I want to live today. One of the things that we're working on is, is a vision, a journey church, to help those who want to live a legacy life. What does that look like? What does a legacy life look like? And, and soon we'll outline some, some projects that will uh, make a big difference in the lives of people today. Like today, how do we make change in people's lives and help transform their lives? And, and you could support these financially and find ways to be a part of that um, and connect with us. And we want to outline and share vision also to some new things and new projects that we believe God's asking us to be a part of in the coming days and months and years ahead. We're going to ask you to participate with that vision to be a part of what God wants to do so that we can see lives being transformed by the gospel. See, God gives the vision. We can accelerate the vision based on our generosity. I mean, isn't that amazing? We have the opportunity as he downloads vision into our lives, into our church, and we have a part to play in accelerating that vision in the kingdom. Psalm 112, verse 9 they share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. Psalm 112, 5 and 6. Good will come to him who is generous and lends freely. Who conducts his affairs with justice. Surely he will never be shaken. A righteous man will be remembered forever. That's a legacy life. Not just money. You give what you have. You give your life away so that you can be a blessing. 2 Corinthians 9, 11 says it this way. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Man, let... Like, let this concept sink into your heart today. Let it sink into your mind. Let it be a part of who you are. Being generous in every area of your life will result in people knowing God. I want to give you three practical things before we go today. Three practical thoughts and ways that you can live a legacy kind of a life. You ready for this? First one is this. Generous with our time. Being generous with your time. For some people here today, this is more valuable than money. Like you recognize how crucially important time is. You recognize that time is such a blessing and can be such a generous gift to those when you give that and give it over to the Lord. Watch what God will do with your time. Second thing I want you to catch today, and I think it's really practical for you today, is being generous with your talent. I mean, I'm not talking about, like, Canadian Idol. Do you remember Canadian Idol? And that was a talent competition, and people would get on television and embarrass themselves. And some were really gifted and amazing, but others thought they could sing. And you know, there used to be a time where I thought I could sing, and then my family heard me sing, and they mocked me. And that hurt a little bit. But I just recognized 
that is not my talent. That is not my gifting to sing. But God's given me other giftings and God has given me other talents. And you know, as you seek the Lord with the talents he's given you, Ephesians 4 talks about this too. To each is given a grace. Something you are good at, right? Like, what are you good at? What have you been divinely enabled to serve in the kingdom? Find out what that looks like. Hey, we're here to help you. If we can be a part of your uh, discovery and, and finding out what your talent is, um, maybe you don't want to try out for the you know, worship team because that could really be painful if you don't make it because, you know, you just didn't make, cut the... Anyway, find out what your talent is and use it for the kingdom. Use it for God's glory. You will find uh, leaving a legacy in, into people being so satisfactory. Third thing I want us to kind of understand today is being generous with our treasure. Being generous with what God has financially given you. Take whatever you have, finances or otherwise. Give your tithe to the Lord. Take what you have. Give your tithe to the Lord. First 10% of the first fruits that God's blessed you with, the increase of your resources, of your finances. Give it to the Lord and be generous with what you have. Watch what God will do with that. Luke 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. You will never regret living your life this way. Try it. Test it. I believe that you can never outgive God. You can never outgive Him in your life, and it's going to make a huge difference in your life. So, we have enjoyed kind of looking at the scripture, and each week we have a word to the wise. Our, our third one this week is this, and it's a wonderful saying, and I think you need to take some stock in this. The value of life isn't determined by how much I achieve or accumulate, but by how much of my life I give away. Isn't that good? Let's pray together today. Lord, we just thank you for this generous church. I thank you for the missionaries. I thank you for those who are serving on the front lines, who are making a difference in our world, the people who are giving, who are hearing the gospel message, maybe for the very first time today. God, I pray that you would reach and, and speak to them and God help them to continue being the generous people that you've called them to be. Thank you, Lord, that you care about us as a church. Thank you about, that you care about each individual here today. We pray your, pray your blessing upon every individual in Jesus' name. I want to pray for that, maybe that person here today. Maybe it's you, and you're feeling very far from God. I said at the beginning of my talk today that I would pray for you. I would think about you. And, and the Lord sees you and knows exactly what you're, you're faced with and going through. And simply all I want to do today is if you're far from God and you want to get to know who he is, you just turn to him. The Bible has a word for that. It's called repent. And repentance just means simply turning from the way you've been going and looking at Jesus and following him and serving him. And, and the good news is he'll walk with you. He'll send his Holy Spirit to help you and to be with you and to give you that peace you need to become the person that God has called you to be. And if you're here today and you're saying, I, I, I want to repent. I want to receive Christ into my life. I need him right now. Just simply call on the name of Jesus. Let me just pray for you. God, thank you for every person. Thank you for every individual who's just calling out to you and simply saying, God, I surrender. I repent from my ways of living. I turn from the, way, the direction I was going and I, I look to you and I turn towards you today. I, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to make me more like you, Lord Jesus. I trust you and I want to walk with you all the days of my life. I receive you into my life right now in Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you said that prayer today, we are jumping for joy with you right now. We're celebrating, we're going crazy, we're thankful 
thankful that you made that decision, you said that prayer. And simply, if you said that prayer and you meet, you meant it. God is coming to you right now. He knows your heart. He knows exactly what you're going through. And listen, when you make a big decision like this, sometimes you have some questions that need to be asked. And we would love to put some information in your hands. We would love to give you a Bible. We'd love to place some, uh, you know, like now what? What do you do now? Now that you've given your life to Jesus, what more should I do? And if that's you, simply just raise your hand in the chat room there. Said, yes, I gave my, my life to Jesus. I said yes to him today. And someone would love to connect with you. We'd love to put some resources in your hand, free resources. And we would love to pray with you. If you need some prayer today and you just recognize your need for God, maybe you're feeling isolated or all alone, God wants to meet your needs today. Simply just ask for prayer. Connect with us online. We would love to walk with you in the days ahead. So thankful for you today. Thankful for what God's doing in this church. Thankful for what God's doing in your life today. Listen, if we can be a, of help to you and any assistance at all, please connect with us. We love to chat with you. We miss you like crazy. Thanks for joining us this week. Listen, next week we'll have some more, um, some more things that are, are going to be happening in this series. You don't want to miss it, so please tune in. And some great surprises coming in the weeks to come. God bless you. Listen, you want to connect with us online, go to our newsletter. We would love to, to uh, give you some information, update information every week. Well, until we talk to you again, we'll see you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of this community. We miss you like crazy. Bye for now. We'll see you again next week.